Meanwhile, in southern France, Ford Motorsport was preparing for its World Championship debut with a very enthusiastic team. Escort, obviously, the process of development has accelerated enormously so that in the start of 93 we're ready to go with the Escort. As the program with the Sierra has been tailed off, um, we've been able to concentrate more and more on the Escort, and it's necessarily had to accelerate enormously in terms of its development so that we can put a lot of effort into being competitive at the start of 93. We won't know, the same as nobody else in any of the other teams will know, until we get to the start of Monte Carlo Rally just how successful we've been. Between 92 and 93, the weight limits for all the cars have gone up from 1,100 kilos to 1,200 kilos. The tyre sizes have changed. The tyre sizes for 93 are smaller, smaller in diameter, smaller in width than they were in 92. Um, and there's now limitations on the sort of fuel that you can use. So the regulations have been going in a fashion that uh, reduces the performance of the cars. Whereas, of course, all the manufacturers, uh, us included, have been trying to go in the opposite direction to increase the performance. And it's a question of how that balance works out in the end as to just whether or not the 93 cars, whether they be Ford or anybody else, are actually faster than 92 cars or not. When I arrived in Ford in 1991, Philippe was the first people uh, to, to go in the car with me. And uh, since this, I have a very good feeling with Philippe. Uh, he has experience uh, to go in the car with Malcolm, with Mickey, with me, with Fiorio before. And uh, I think he's not only a good engineer, he has experience. Better because it's two-door car. It's smaller. It's more. It's better handling the twisty in the narrow roads. And uh, uh, the engine is uh, transmission and drive shaft and everything is the same of the Sierra. So I, I think they are strong enough. Very. They have done a lot of tests, so they are strong enough. So I hope we have a good, uh, a very good car. The Escort Cosworth was finally homologated on January the 1st, 1993.
From that moment on, at both national and international level, in Group A and Group N, it has done everything that could have been asked of it. There have been scores of the cars in Britain alone, many of them built up from new body shells, but using Sierra Cosworth 4x4 running gear. In other words, they're probably the fastest kit cars around today. spec Group A car, whilst about £80,000 would buy you a winning Group N car. Already it seems that the Escort Cosworth will dominate rallying for years to come. Whatever the conditions, whether it be tarmac or gravel, the Escort has proved to be the car to beat. It has been absolutely sensational. One team in Britain, which has been especially successful, has been the Malcolm Wilson Motorsport run Michelin Pilot team. Let's join Malcolm for a quick run in his Looks escort. Looks straight. Looks to keep going flat right to junction, hairpin right. right, easy left. That was Malcolm Wilson driving, and anyone who has seen him at work in his Escort Cosworth would think that he's got enough to do simply driving his Michelin pilot car and testing for the Ford World Rally Championship team. But that's not enough for this man, as he has his own much-respected motorsport business as well. Simply titled Malcolm Wilson Motorsport, the Cumbrian firm not only prepared the team Michelin pilot Ford Escort Cosworths for Malcolm and Stephen Finlay, but cars for teams from all over the world. Of course, it's the Michelin pilot cars that took pride of place in the workshop in 1994. And fortunately, the car's reliability, with one notable exception, and the driver's ability to keep the cars on the road meant that in most cases, the Escort Cosworths needed little more than a good service between each event. That in itself is good news, as in the workshops, there was plenty more to be done, with new cars being built all the time, as well as cars being run in the UK for Brian Bell, Alan Peacock and Peter Vassallo. Mr. Wilson himself, he now has the task of explaining to a group of journalists how his company operates. For a professional team, PR is just as important as any other side of the business. Um, and then it's either reused or it's, or it's been there's different things. I mean, you're looking at 500 kilometers for the front disc before it's inspected, but there's other parts in the car that will probably do 2,000 kilometers. They tend to be quite good, shock absorbers, things like that. We tend to reuse those rally after rally. Mm -hmm. After they've cooled down again, you can reuse them and they're still as efficient as, mm -hmm. as they were. Yeah. 
but um, it certainly has took a, a pound of used to give you an idea that we don't sort of experience these sort of problems on World Championship Valley. And it's just because of the roughness of the rally now. It's sort of what are they doing to it? Yeah, and it, it's just, and it's so high speed as well. Mm -hmm. So this is a problem that, you know, gives a lot more damage than the slow. It's the speed combined with the roughness that does the damage. The, the time consuming part is building everything back up and cleaning everything back again. You know, there's no way you want to send your car back out there because it's just screwed up on corners back then. So you know, this is all the clean down and obviously it's a lot harder to clean it down if it's been used than it is with the new shells. Mm. What time does arise in the workshops of the rally in, in the States? How long does it take you to turn it over and send it out again as a spark? Well, this one's got to be done in a fortnight. <coughs> I mean, again, you work to a schedule, you know, we had the one back from the, the Johnny Club car from Costa Smeralda and we had to turn that one around in like five days and that had body damage on it and we had to convert it from gravel spray to tarmac, so, I mean, there's a, a lot of late nights. This is a bit of an exception because of the, 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 the rallies are very rough out there, so it does take a lot more of the car. It's about three weeks work from this stage building a new car. <coughs> because obviously you've got all the little brackets, the individual brackets and things like that for me. And cage is all fully multi-pointed. Yeah, into the <clears throat> it's all integral yeah. into as many points as, especially into all this. And this is another car that's nearly complete. It's, this is sort of built to the stage now, where it could be built in either gravel. You know, everything's on apart from suspension, virtually. So you know, you could decide now whether it's going to go to gravel or or, 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 as, or asphalt. Um, I think the, the rally for this is about three weeks' time. How many do you build a year? <coughs> I think now we're up since we started 18 months ago. I think we're up to 14 or 15. frighten a few of the journalists before it's off to do the simple task of winning the Pirelli rally. to which Malcolm won the Scottish, Ulster and Manx rallies to become British Open Rally Champion for the very first time. Last left, 100. Last right, 50. Last left long, to absolute right long, continues. Last left, 30. Elsewhere, there were Group N victories on the British Championship for all manner of escort cosmos, while Johnny Milner won Group N on the RAC Rally as well. The Works Escorts also won the Monte Carlo and Thousand Lakes Rally in a Ford season that was ruined by a serious road accident to Francois Delacour. Looking back now, did Stuart Turner think that the Escort Cosworth had achieved all that it set out to achieve? With any programme like the Escort Cosworth, Sierra Cosworth, RS200, one of the most difficult things with a big company is selling it to is getting it approved within the company. And obviously you make promises, you say that it's going to win this, it's going to do that, it's going to do the other. With the Escort Cosworth, and that, when that programme was being sold, we assured people it would be, A, a world championship 
rally winner and B, it would also work across Europe. It would win national championships. And it's encouraging that with Delacour's win on the Monte Carlo rally, with wins all across Europe, I think it can be fairly said to have met its brief.